Hello and welcome to Cisco ASA Training 101. This time we're doing setting up a DMZ. My name is Don Crawley from soundtraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This video is based on Chapter 9 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. It's available from Amazon.com and other resellers, although certainly you don't have to have a copy, but if you'd like to follow along, you can get one. The video uses ASA Software version 8.439 and ASDM version 6.45206. If you're using a different version, some of the commands may or may not work, although it should work with versions 8.3 and later. Let's go ahead and jump into it. First of all, what is a DMZ? A DMZ is simply a way of protecting a host or host behind a firewall while still allowing a limited level of access from the public internet. In the diagram, you can see there's a web server in the DMZ. Therefore, we poke a hole through the firewall to allow port 80 and 443 traffic to be initiated from the internet coming into the DMZ. And what this is really about is where you can initiate traffic. So in this example, the DMZ can initiate traffic onto the internet. The office lane can initiate traffic onto the DMZ and the internet, but the internet can't initiate traffic into either the DMZ or the office lane with the exception of port 80 and 443 going into the DMZ. Here's another diagram of DMZ. This is similar to the previous one, but you'll notice in the lower left-hand corner we make a reference to security levels. And security levels are a way of assigning default permissions for which way traffic can flow. Typically, you'll give an inside network a security level of 100 and an outside network a security level of zero. And what that means is that traffic can flow from the inside with the higher security level to the outside with the lower security level, relatively unimpeded, but not the other way. Now, you actually assign security levels to interfaces, not networks, but it's easier to talk about assigning them to networks. Now, you'll notice that the DMZ has a security level of 50, and what that means is that traffic can flow from the DMZ to the Internet. It can flow from the inside to the DMZ, but it can't flow from the DMZ to the inside. Now, suppose that we want to poke a hole in the firewall and allow traffic to flow from the internet into the DMZ, which we probably would want to do since we have a web server there. And the way we do that is with static NAT, network address translation, combined with access control lists. The NAT directs the traffic and the access control lists permit or deny it. In this case, we would permit it. Here's the diagram that we're going to be using for the exercise we're about to do. And as you can see, we have three separate networks or IP subnets. One is the internet or the outside. One is the DMZ, and one is the office LAN or the inside. Now, the IP addresses that we're using are just in our LAN. They're private addresses, so this wouldn't actually work on the Internet. You'd have to modify the IP addresses, of course. But our outside interface on our firewall has an IP address of 192.168.1.11. The inside is on the 192.168.106 subnet, and the DMZ is on the 172.16.0 subnet. If you'd like to download this diagram and the configuration, it's available for free at our website at www.soundtraining.net slash dmzconfig. Here's the disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. There are no guarantees whatsoever. We hope it'll be helpful for you, but no guarantees. Do not attempt these procedures on a production firewall without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. And performing these procedures may open your firewall to the public internet and subject your network to attack. So, make sure you have current backups and take precautions, including data encryption and additional access controls to protect any sensitive data. Here are the prerequisites. In order to do this exercise, you should have the following. An understanding of TCP IP, including subnetting and port numbers. Experience working in the Cisco command line environment. That could be on a router or a switch or another ASA. You don't have to have a lot, but a little bit. And unrestricted privilege mode access to a Cisco ASA security appliance. Without that, you cannot perform these exercises. Here are the equipment and software requirements. A Cisco ASA 5505 security appliance with a base license. Now, you could do this with a 5510, 20, 40, or 50, and it's going to be very, very similar. There's a slight differences in the interfaces, but otherwise, you should be able to do it with a, a different ASA than the 5505. It does need to be configured with factory default settings in order for you to follow along with the numbers that we're using and so on, including a management interface at 192.168.106.1. 
You'll also need three computers, one connected to the outside interface, one connected to the inside interface, and one running web server software connected to the DMZ interface. A couple of comments on that. I'm using physical computers because I have it set up in my lab, but you certainly could use virtual machines in VMware or VirtualBox or Virtual PC. No reason not to. That's a matter of personal preference. The other comment is the web server software. It doesn't matter what you use. You could do Apache. You could do IIS. The one that I'm using is called Abyss. Uh, if you just Google on Abyss web server, you can find it to download. You'll also need terminal emulation software such as Putty. Putty is available for download for free from putty.org. If you prefer a secure CRT, TerraTerm, or any of the others, then certainly use whatever you prefer. But you'll need some kind of terminal emulation software in order to execute these commands. Here's a summary of the steps that we're going to go through. We'll add a third named interface. That'll be the DMZ to the ASA. We'll configure port address translation, PAT, for the DMZ to the outside. We'll create network objects and configure static NAT, network address translation, to direct port 80 requests to the web server. And this must be done for both the inside and the outside hosts. And finally, we'll configure an access control list to allow traffic from the outside access to the DMZ web server uh, in the DMZ. And we're going to be doing this in a combination of the GUI, the Adaptive Security Device Manager, and in the command line interface. The entire exercise could be done in either one. We're going to mix it up a little bit and, and do it about half and half. Let's get started by adding a new interface, and we're going to use the ASDM for that. I've already opened it up, and so we'll go to the Configuration button, and we're going to go to Interfaces, and I'm going to choose to Add an Interface. And let's bring this down so it's a little easier for you to see the entire window. And I'm going to choose interface Ethernet 0 slash 3 to add to the DMZ. That's just an arbitrary decision on my part. And you could certainly add more than one if you needed that, but we only need one for our purposes here. So we'll go ahead and click on Add. Now, logically, you'd want to go to name the interface. But because this is an ASA with a base license, so that means that Two VLANs can be wide open, but one has to be restricted. So we have to go to the Advanced tab, and we're going to choose to block traffic from this interface to VLAN 1, the inside. If you don't do this, you can't finish the uh, process of adding the interface. And now we can name the interface, so we're going to call it DMZ, and we're going to set a security level of 50. Remember, earlier we talked about security levels. Now we're going to come and add an IP address of 172.16.0.1, as per the map, the diagram, and we'll set a 24-bit mask on it. Now with that complete, we can go ahead and click OK. There you can see it in the display. Let's go ahead and apply it so that it delivers it to the device. Now one of the things that I like to do is I like to set my device to allow me to preview CLI commands. This is a little thing, but it's kind of cool because this is a great way of learning command line interface commands. We'll go ahead and click Send to send it to the device. It's now delivering the commands to the ASA, and now it is loading the updated configuration from the device. It's done, and now you can see there is our new DMZ interface. So now we're done with adding the interface. Let's switch from the Adaptive Security Device Manager now to the command line interface. Now in the command line interface, what we're going to do is we're going to first of all set up PAT, port address translation, for our DMZ. So if our DMZ host or hosts need to get out onto the internet, they can. And then we're going to configure static NAT for uh, access from the inside network as well as access from the internet. And finally, we'll set up an access control list. So let's start by setting up static NAT. We'll go into configuration mode, config T. And now we're going to create a network object. The object is named... DMZ outside. This is just a text string and name that I created. And now we're going to describe the object. So it's going to be any subnet. We could be very specific in that, but since it's directing traffic from the DMZ to the outside, as you'll see in a moment, doesn't really matter. And now NAT DMZ outside. Dynamic interface. What that means is that we're doing port address translation. That's the dynamic part of the statement. And interface tells the firewall to use whatever address is on the outside interface that, that we just referenced for the port address translations. So that's done. Now we need to set up static NAT. We just did dynamic NAT. Now we're going to set up static NAT to direct port 80 traffic from the outside 
to the DMZ and also from the inside network to the DMZ. So here we go. We're going to create a new network object. Object network web server from outside. We're going to identify our inside host that's running the web server software, host 172.16.0.2. And now we're going to tell it what to do. We're going to say NAT DMZ from the outside static interface service TCP www www. What that means is use static NAT to translate any, uh, any connection attempts on the outside interface using World Wide Web, send it to the host that we just identified at 172.16.0.2. Now let's do the same thing going from the inside to the DMZ. So we're going to do object network web server from inside. Again, host 172.16.0.2. And a very similar NAT statement, but not exactly the same. DMZ inside. Oops. You got to spell it right. Static interface service TCP www www. Now we're done with the static NAT statements. We have one more thing to do and we'll be done, and that is to create the access control list. So the NAT statements, the static NAT statements, direct the traffic flows. And the access control list is what allows us to go against the security level coming from the outside to the DMZ. So here we go with our access control list. Access list outside to DMZ permit TCP from any source going to host 172.16.0.2 that equals www. And now let's apply the access list to an interface using the access group statement. Here we go. Access group outside to DMZ inbound traffic coming to interface outside. And now we're done. Let's test it. So the PC that I'm working on is connected to the outside interface. So let's just go ahead and attempt to connect to the outside interface on the firewall, and let's see what happens. 192.168.1.11. And there it is. As you can see, I've got a test website set up on the web server. Um, and one of the cool things about it is it shows the IP address that we're hitting from. So let's just test it. You can see at the bottom it says that we're visiting from 192.168.1.42. Well, let's find out. Here we have a command window. Let's do an IP config statement and see what happens. Now I've got a lot of interfaces, so we've got to scroll up here. And there you can see we're connecting from 192.168.1.42. But, like they say on late night TV, but wait, there's more. Let's see what it's like to connect from the inside network. So I'm going to swap out cables here, and let's uh, change to wired from wireless. And we'll try to connect from the inside and see if that works. Okay, I've got the cables swapped out, and I've cleared my screen. Let's do an IP config and see where we're connected from. So IP config. Check our IP address. Once again, scroll up. And this time it should be on the 106 internal network, inside network. Let's see if that's the case. There it is, 106.6. Let's go back over to our browser now, and let's attempt to connect to the inside interface on the firewall, 192.168.106.1. And indeed it works. There you can see we're connecting from 192.168.106.6. So that's all there is to it. It's really not terribly difficult, especially if all you want to do is a web server because you just set up a static NAT with access control list using port 80 and perhaps 443. If you'd like more information about this or any other subject, please visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. I maintain a blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. We've got Google+, Facebook, and Twitter available for you if you'd like to connect with us through social networking. And if you'd like more videos, click on the button to go to our video channel, which is at soundtraining.net slash video. Or if you'd like the companion book, visit our bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Thanks for watching. I hope it's been helpful for soundtraining.net. I'm Don Crawley. We'll see you next time.